Hello everyone, this is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. Sorry about that attempt at the music. Not sure if that worked. I thought I had it set, but wasn't exactly right. We're still working through a lot of the difficulties, you know, here at the Howard Dare Studios setting up these podcasts. So I hope you guys can hear me okay. Now, we've got a few things planned. Um want to talk about the transsexual, uh, you know, the rescinding of the transsexual bathroom order for the schools, right? And the reaction to that on the Tucker Carlson show. We're, you know, we're going to play that video. I've got a few other things planned. Uh, I, I need to talk about some of the technical things going on here at the Howard Dare channel. <laughs> oh, you know, just to explain, like, what the hell's going on, right? Um... Yeah, because, you know, we're trying something new. Got to chuck things in the chat. I also want to talk about the MGTOW monks. And uh, I want to look at some of the protest signs, you know, because these signs are these signs are great, man. <laughs> some of these signs are just fucking hysterical, you know, like that the fat chick with the uh, purple hair, you know, make me a sandwich uh, stuff. It's like you, you've got to be kidding me. Like they they don't even understand the irony of their own protests, you know. So I think that some of those are definitely worth looking at. Um, were you guys able to hear the music? You know, because I, I, I'm inclined to, well, shit, no, I can't even try it again. I thought it was going to be so cool. Um, so every time I'm doing one of these podcasts, I'm making a whole bunch of mistakes. And I'm just trying to improve on them, you know, for the next podcast, right? Like, it just occurred to me that my whole sound system... Um, is not going to be coming through my headphones. I'm sorry. I know you guys don't care about this stuff either, <laughs> right? Um, the audio is good. All right. Well, here, then let's just run a little test here. You know, because I had mentioned that I want to talk about the MGTOW monks. And... You know, I, I don't think there's any rule that says that a man can't adopt a monk lifestyle for a time and then leave the the monastery, you know, and then come back. It's not, I, I never thought that the monks were so, you know, uh, rule bound. You know, now I don't think you can be a monk and engage in that, you know, non-monk lifestyle at the same time. You can't do that. Although you can drink, right? Because there was Friar Tuck, and he was a monk, and he was getting drunk all the time. And I think he might have even, I don't know. I don't know if he was, like, going after women <laughs> or not, right? So, no, I, I believe that it's something that, you know, the individual man does and takes on. Oh, let me try something out here. Bear with me, people. This is going to be a little creepy, but kind of cool, I hope. Now, you know, the a really fascinating aspect of the whole monk lifestyle is that if you'll go back and you will ask people from antiquity what it is that makes a person happy, you know, they know that it is a calm, meditative lifestyle, close friends that share your interests, and regular work that's meaningful. A monk lifestyle, a monastery lifestyle, as opposed to, you know, this other idea of what makes for a good life is, you know, fame and fortune and all the sex you want. Can you guys hear the music that's coming in the background, the chanting and stuff? Right? Because I can't. That's the whole thing. <laughs> 
You know, we're trying these new things at the Howard Deer Studios, and we need new stuff. I need a complete whole mixing thing, chant, excellent. Um, and I'm hoping that my audio levels with the you know music are are appropriate. You know what I mean? That's the uh, all of this music that I use is available over at the uh, YouTube video editor, and uh, yeah, it's all there. Canius Monk. You can just look it up. And it's a great resource for you guys if you want to, you know, and you should be making YouTube videos. You know, you start at the beginning and you build it up, right? And your voice is needed within the MGTOW community. And part of your recovery, you know, or your growing awareness as a MGTOW is speaking out, you know, is sharing this. Now, it doesn't have to be you personally, you know what I mean? And I understand the difficulties because when I first started doing this, I was nervous, you know, it was hard for me to say these things. And it's it's still difficult and there's still subjects that I, you know, that I find difficult, right? But I really appreciate the calm, meditative lifestyle and, you know, that's what makes the person happy, being happy with, you know, what you have, working hard, having some friends, sharing, you know, similar interests, not being rich and famous, right? you know, you want money and stuff like that. So little sidetracked there, right? Good, near perfect. Yeah, I wish I could monitor the whole situation, but I just don't have the equipment yet. And and the, the know how. But, uh, you know, it's definitely worth doing. So I, I don't think, you know, re regarding this, you know, MGTOW monk lifestyle as well. I don't think like, you know, you have to be hard and fast regarding the judgments on these things. Like what a man does with his personal sexuality. Um, as long as he's not a blue pill fool, you know, as long as he's not a man giant worshiping women and saying that, you know, only the only thing a real man does is worship women. It's, it's so sad when I have to hear this sort of stuff, you know, uh, like the man suggesting that the measure of his manhood is what some fat, ugly bitch who thinks he's a fool, you know, is going to lie to him and tell him, right? Uh, recent video, don't even know the guy's name. A um, couple of people have responded to it. You know, this goat looking guy <laughs> with his beard sitting in his truck saying that the real measure of a manhood, you know, is whether or not he, you know, gets together with a particular woman and has sex with her and has children. Right. And it's like, oh, really? That's what it is, huh, pal? It's like, no, no, maybe it all worked out for him, you know, and that's great. And, you know, good luck to him. But the situation that men are facing nowadays, it's like, you got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me that you would suggest that a man do such a thing. It's like, you must be retarded. You must be an idiot. You know, so there is this stage of development for the man where, you know, he, he adopts the values of everything around him, right? He wants the woman. He wants the car. He wants the fame. He wants the fortune. He'll screw over everybody, you know, um, and that's what a real man is. And he'll kill himself in that pursuit. But the women don't care. They, they think it's a joke. And, you know, I, I would say that a better way to measure your manhood would be your physical strength and your health and your well-being and your effectiveness. So find your voice, you know, protect your protect the you know sanctity of your mind, you know, in your values. These are the things that are important, your health, your well-being, your personal integrity and honor. Not fame, not fortune, not popularity, not a car, not some retarded bitch. You know, once you have, I mean, it's like, what is this blue pill thirst? It's retarded. You know, it's like once you've had your food, you know, you're not sitting there and like talking about your food and acting all hungry and stuff, you know? So when we encounter the blue pill man that's measuring his worth and value as an individual, by his utility to a system that thinks he's a fool, that's going to use him up, right? Don't go that way. Recognize what's going on. You don't even have to be shamed by him. You know, it's like the difference between a man who builds his own business versus a man who works for the corporation. Now, I got nothing bad to say about a man who's working for the corporation and making good money and stuff like that, but he needs to remember that, you know, he is not the corporation, Right, that they don't care about him. Right, and that the real goal for him 
would be to use the shit out of that company and then build his own. Go his own way. But to go the way of the corporation, to go the way of the company, this is why I like Trump. What happened to my music, man? I can't monitor. If I could monitor the music, man, I would be like, I would be talking in rhythm and time to the sound and stuff. That would be awesome. <laughs> you know, so we're working on these things. So I'll get comments um, tomorrow <clears throat> from like the two or three people who watch this. And they'll be like, you shouldn't use music like that because, you know, it sounds disjointed. And it's like, yeah, no shit. <clears throat> right. Um, okay. Sorry. Let's uh, check something else out here. Huh. Damn, I'm going to have a problem here. It just occurred to me. I'm going to need to be able to hear the video here, people. Hmm. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold that segment until the end, right? I'm just going to do a couple of other things here <clears throat> where I don't need um, to monitor the audio. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll do that. You know, then we'll look at the video here in about, you know, five minutes or so. And um, if it crashes, right, because it might, um, you know, it, that'll just be what it does. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at some of those protest signs that have been coming out lately. Let me show you my favorite protest sign. Give me a second. Actually, I don't know what order these ones will be in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so angry I made a sign, not my president. <sighs> That's a good one, right? My neck, my back, my pussy. <laughs> we'll grab back. Unbelievable, you know? Because you got to know that, uh, like, these are homemade signs. So, so they're much more respectable, in my opinion. And... uh I think it's unfortunate that when people look at the homemade sign, you know, they, they turn away from it. Let's see. I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. I am changing the things I cannot accept. What? <laughs> what? This is like a thumbnail, right? This is, there, there's an art to this, right? Now, look at the one in the background, that Black Lives Matter one. Now, that's how you do it, okay? Three words, okay? So, if you're building a thumbnail, this is just my opinion, okay? You know. You got to keep it simple on these signs and on these thumbnails and stuff. Right? You, just, you don't want to have to make somebody squint to read the thing. All right, let's take a look at another one. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Here you go. This pussy has claws. Yeah, great picture of a little pussy cat there. Yeah, she, but the artist is hiding her face, right? Probably for those SS signs there, right? Because she's a Nazi, right? So if she wasn't a liberal and a femtard, you know, like if she was a conservative and she put out a sign like this, they would say, she's a Nazi. She's a fascist. She's just like Hitler, right? That's an SS pussycat. Damn, though, you know, the comparisons between feminists and, uh, you know, Nazis, it's, it's not, it's not far-fetched because what you're looking at is, you know, uh, state-sanctioned political ideology enforced you know, with the arm of the state, right? And what is feminism? It's this, you know, fascist-like ideology that is forced upon people, and if you don't go along with it, the whole force of the, you know, in-group, uh, the socialist group, the left group comes down on you. The mainstream media comes down on you. That's why I'm focusing on the things that I'm focusing on lately with the mainstream media because they're going insane. And we've got huge attacks coming our way. And, uh, yeah, huge attacks. And it's actually trying to stop things like, you know, just some basic progress and some basic health. So, you know, it's a question of which road are we going to go down. And we're trying to go down the road of, Improving, getting strong, repairing things. 
and being fit and being able to dominate. But we've got a bunch of people who want to take us down this other road of enslavement. You know, they want to be entitled and they want to use their... Anyway, okay, I'm getting off topic. Okay, yeah, check this sign out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to know that this is probably like the first sign that they've made. <laughs> now, I can't fault anybody, you know, because... I've never made a sign. Now, but look at the one up here on top of it. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. Revcom.us. Now that's fucking organized, right? That's a sign. But this other thing? <laughs> this is very bad. Now pussy grabs back. So that, that's a fine sentiment right there, okay? But she needed, you know, some bigger, bolder letters there, you know. I'm sure she went over it and said, okay, you know, not bad, but, you know, where's that big black thick marker, you know, to really make it stand out. But no, you know, she didn't, she didn't further examine the situation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is a, uh, from last night it was a pretty bad podcast so you might want to check it out you know it, it, it went south it went bad and I got some feedback so you know it's not a complete loss right and the mistakes that I made yesterday hey I didn't make those mistakes today no I made different mistakes today so so let me see if uh I can adjust. I know you guys don't care about this, but I have to kind of think through this in lifetime. If I can adjust my audio in real time without shutting everything down. It's a little dangerous, people. We, we might go haywire from this point forward. Okay, that was the setting I needed. Wait a minute, I haven't applied it. <laughs> I haven't applied it yet. Here we go, apply. Okay, that was the setting I needed. Let me see if we're still here. Um... Is my audio still good? Yes. Thank you, guys. Okay. I swear, you know, the, um, the notification system isn't working here properly. So we're gonna, I'm going to have to find some sort of workaround, right? Because when the stream starts, I would like for people to, you know, to already be hanging out and stuff. I would, I would like to have a few hundred people here, okay? And I don't think that's unreasonable. Okay, that might be a little unreasonable, <laughs> right? But you got to shoot for the bigger things, you know? You got to you got to shoot for the bigger things here. Okay. Um elapsed time 19 minutes. So, I'm trying to keep these things a little shorter, but I don't think anybody's getting notified. Let's see if I can work my audio. Okay, let's give this a try. Well, last May, the Obama administration announced a new rule requiring every public school in the country to let transgender students use whichever bathroom or locker room match their preferred gender identity. Well, yesterday, the Trump administration retracted that rule, saying that bathroom policies like these are state issues and shouldn't be set by the decrees of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Zach Pacanis is the senior advisor to the DNC and helms their Trump war room. This morning on Twitter, he called President Trump a monster 
for reverting to the policy in place just one year ago. He joins us now. Zach, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, I, you know, I think there are two sides to every debate, including this one. What I, I was so struck by was your tweet, where you, and I'm reading it now. I woke up feeling so sick to my stomach about the Trump White House's attacks on vulnerable LGBT kids. These people are monsters. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, was Obama attacking vulnerable LGBT kids a year ago before putting this policy into place? He spent seven years as president and didn't do this. Was he a monster attacking LGBT kids during that time? Well, I mean, what we know is that he put these, protect he put these protections in place. And let's be clear about what we're actually talking about. This is guidance that was provided to schools that schools wanted and asked for. And it is very, it's for a very specific reason. They wanted to create a safe environment for all the kids in their school, and they wanted to avoid Title IX lawsuits. I mean, that's what's so mind-boggling about uh, what the Trump administration did uh, today. He took away practical guidance to school administrators and principals who were looking to create this, this safe environment and were looking to not get sued for Title IX violations. I mean, those guidelines still exist on the Internet, presumably, and they could look them up. It's not like they're disappearing from the English language. And so I still am waiting for the... Okay, so it's an interesting point, you know what I mean, that the schools are looking for guidance, but that's not what they were getting with, you know, the federal government saying that, you know, enforcing this. If they had been looking for, you know, guidance, in other words, the federal government would have said, these are your options, you know what I mean, we'll, we'll support you either way. You know, and these are some of the ideas that we think you should have. But this other idea of saying, you know, we're going to redefine gender as, you know, a social construct without any regard to the biology here, it really is, you know, a leftist. It is um, a communist. It is a postmodernist way of destroying the relations between the genders. And thereby you destroy a society and a culture. That's one of the ways you do it. Let's just move on, though. Answer my question, though. It took the Obama people seven years to do this, and that's fine with me, but I'm not the one calling people monsters sure. for pulling them back. So, like, are you giving President Obama a pass for not acting on this show? I, I'm, I'm giving Obama, uh, uh, President Obama extraordinary praise for taking decisive action to protect these vulnerable kids. Okay. Okay. And, and I am saying that Donald Trump is not only a monster, but he's a coward. We're talking... <laughs> Well, that might be going a little far, okay? Now, maybe he's suggesting... See, I'm trying to be fair on all this stuff, right? You know, because I'm, I'm a decent guy. Um, so, fine, Obama steps up for the very first time and says, you know, let's do this. And you can say that that's a very brave move, right? Even though I don't agree with it at all. I believe it's fundamentally unsound, and I believe it was just, you know, political pandering bullshit. Um, and, and disgusting at that. But, but you know, I'll save my personal opinions. Um, but attacking Trump like this for adopting a respect for traditional gender roles, that's kind of obscene. You know, you know what I mean? I, I know that people are just like, oh, well, this is how it happens in our society. But it's actually a little obscene if, you, if you'd... Uh, Think about it from a practical health point of view. Uh, so that's how I see it. Moving on. We're talking, we're talking about um, somebody who is so emasculated by Vladimir Putin that uh -huh. he has... Okay, now that's just retarded. You know what I mean? I don't see how somebody in the position of Trump is being emasculated by anybody, let alone, you know, honestly, even like a world leader. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, well, I don't know. You can pretend that you could kick his ass. You can pretend that you could make that much money. You could pretend that you could have won that election. You could pretend that you could, you know, be doing what he's doing right now. And a lot of people do. But really, the reality of it? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, mean, I know. I know better. And this is an awareness that comes to men in time, you know, with enough experience of doing something. And you don't judge people, you know, that harshly on these types of things. Unless your emotions are out of control, right? And, and that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's not so uncommon. So carrying on. 
to come. All right, I'm going to have to stop you there because it's then now we're now we're getting off in a little bit. No, no, that he has to come back and pick on vulnerable kids. These kids, these kids are the most vulnerable children in the country. Slow down, Zach. Let's let's get let's get to the core of the issue. Absolutely. Look, I get that you're. I'm never going to get you to say that that Obama should have done early. That's fine. Let's get, move from the politics to the science, because this policy has sure. implications that go far beyond bathrooms and locker rooms. The core question is what constitutes male and female. And the implication of these guidelines that Obama put in place is that a man is someone who says he's a man and a woman who's, is someone who says she's a woman. You get to decide your gender. You're, there's no biological anchor to sex anymore, it's all determined by the individual. So my obvious question for you is, how do I know if a person's male or female? Is there some other absolute standard that people have to meet to be male or female, other than what they say? One, one's gender identity is, is enough to show what gender they are. And so if you're... Okay, that, that's retarded, okay? And I think that we've got to deal with this on two different levels, on a biological level of that, on a biological level where sex is sex okay there is no claiming anything you can have a hormone imbalance and you can have you know weak testosterone high estrogen as a man and you could have high testosterone as a woman you could definitely have that um but your biological sex is your biological sex and i think that what we're looking at in a lot of these cases is a biological malfunction and i don't want to be unkind but now let us also consider there is a you know there is a cultural societal issue going on here i looked up a couple videos getting ready to do this podcast all right and there's these transsexuals you know guys that are going out as women and they're upset you know and they're real feminine right so you know where's where's blair white going to go to the bathroom now okay because if she walks into the bathroom with all the men that's going to be pretty weird you know so, culturally, socially, this is an issue. Also, the, the antidepressants, the SSRIs, destroy sexuality. They really do. They turn these people, especially the women, into special snowflakes that lose their gender identity. So, yeah, they're lost, you know, and they're suffering and they're confused. And they're upset and they're going to protest, you know, and it's not completely meaningless. So I've got sympathy. I've got compassion. But at the same time, you can't allow these types of standards to destroy, you know, the uh, mental sexuality of children. You know, you that is something that you have to protect. OK, carrying on. Confused about that. I mean, I leave that, you know, to your level of enlightenment and and uh and no no this is it's not about enlightenment it's it, not it, about it it's not about moral status this is a real question because there are all kinds of institutions in american life that function on a sex segregated basis women's college sports both professional and amateur prisons and so you're telling me that i can play on a woman's sports team when i say i'm a woman well, we are, what we are saying is that in this guidance with public schools which were in and the vulnerable yeah, what happened? Sorry, people. Let me start that over. Um, damn. Well, not start over, but I, I can jump to the area. Well, last May the, the it, it is it is it is it is it is it is, it is pretty absurd, and there are no wait, other. Wait, wait, examples. Because, because why? There, because. And so you're telling me that I can play on a woman's sports team when I say I'm a woman. Well, we are what we are saying is that in this guidance with public schools, which we're in and the vulnerable kids that are there, that there are specific guidelines that these teachers and these supervisors and these principals asked for and how to create safe. Okay, but now you're going back spaces. to the first question. You but, just but, said but a that second is, ago. But, but, that, but that is what we're. But that is what we're. That is what we're talking no, about. No, let me take you back three sentences. When you said gender identity is determined by the person who possesses it, that's mm -hmm. almost exactly what you said. Correct. And I'm saying there are massive implications of this that everyone is either too dumb or too embarrassed to explore, but let's do so now. If your sex is what you say it is, then what prevents me from playing on a women's field hockey team? What prevents me from getting convicted of a felony and demanding to go to a women's prison? And it's a real question. It's, it's not a, it's not a real question. Why is it not a real question? It's, it's, it's not a real question because it is pretty absurd. And there are no wait, other wait, examples. Wait, wait, because, because why? There, because there are no examples of this. The, 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 what do you mean? There, there, I'm sorry, but there are no examples. This is the same argument about saying that there, uh, this will allow sexual predators to go into, into women's I'm not into making that argument. Yes, but, yeah, but, you are, but you are making that argument. Okay, what I'm saying is... But isn't that a valid argument as well? 
I mean, I wouldn't want that happening. You know what I mean? And this this idea of normalizing transgenderism, that's the problem. And it's undercutting two traditional gender roles. Now, I'll get a lot of shit for this from both sides, okay? Even on the MGTOW side. And, uh, man, let me tell you guys something. And I don't know if you know this, but... It's a lot more popular to attack these things and to, you know, for somebody to make a video about being transgender, okay? You get a lot more views on that side of it. It's a lot more popular to attack Trump. That's what this is about. This is an industry. And I know that some of you don't know this yet, and that's okay. But what I want you guys to know is that I know it, okay? Is that I'm choosing to defend a certain point of view that I know is less popular that I know puts me at a disadvantage, at least in the short run, okay? So, (laughs) yeah, you don't need to know this yet, but you should know that I know this, or at least that's the premise under which I'm operating. Okay, so carrying on. I just want to know what the standards are. I'm not actually making any claims. I'm merely the, asking the, a question the, the, the that I want are, you to answer. Yes, the standards is are Is there exact, a scientific exactly standard? Because when you deal with questions of biology, that is a species of science. So what's the scientific standard? I'm a scientist. I want to know if you're a man or a woman. How do I find out? Look, these, these are discussions that, you're, that I encourage you to have with someone, someone who is transgender, and they can come and, and no, talk to you about it. No, I don't need that. And, you see, this is another unreasonable aspect to this argument. These are the valid questions. You know, what is a doctor supposed to do if someone is a man and says he's a woman and the prescription for the man and the woman is completely different? And it is. Are you supposed to give them the medication for the gender for which they identify as? If they do, they would die. Now, perhaps this Zach, you know, thinks that that's an absurd question because you would simply give them the, you know, the the proper, you know, you, you would deal with the biological aspect in a real reality-based way, but you would deal with the cultural aspect in, you know, this ultra-sensitive way because that's what he wants, not understanding that this is undercutting this fundamental principle of how we interact with each other. You know, gender is real, and it even goes towards other things. It goes towards this fundamental law of reality. You know, now I'm, you know, bringing Aristotle into it. This fundamental law that A is A, that the thing we say that it is, is that thing. And you can't say that it is something else. You can't say that a tree is a bird. And you cannot say that a bird is a tree. And if you do so, you undercut our ability to deal with reality. So that's a principle that's, a, that's at stake here, you know. Now, on the other side of it, they, people might have a real societal issue that needs to be dealt with. Anyway, carrying on. To speak to a I can speak to you because you think about the stuff for a living. So it's a very simple question. Yes. I want to know if you're a man or a woman. I'm a scientist. How do I find out? Your gender identity determines your gender, period. Okay. So should someone who looks like me, I look like a man, you think I was a man, I say I'm a woman, and I demand to play in a women's sports team. I demand to go to a women's college. I demand a small business administration loan for women-owned businesses. That's a real thing. That's a billion-dollar question, for real. Can you, can you turn me down if I say I'm a woman? The question that is on the table right now is about Title IX. Let's not. And I wonder why he won't answer such a direct, you know, question. And the, the reason why, of course, is because, you know, it would destroy his argument. <laughs> okay, carrying on. And about, and about and about guidance. No, but you want to go off on Title these Nine applies. It's not a tangent. You, you want, you Title want, Nine you applies to it applies and was created yes. around the question of women's sports. So, as a apparent man, if I say I'm a woman, is that enough? Do I meet the standard as a woman to play in a woman's sports team? This, that this, goes right to Title IX. This, Don't this, dodge the question. I'm not dodging the question. This is something that the Supreme Court is be looking at is going to looking at next, next month. And yes, the answer is absolutely yes. Okay. Gender identity determines one's gender. Let me ask you period. this. Period. And just, this is a ma- this is a matter this is a matter of civil rights. Is there science behind this? How can a person say that? You know. And not make this distinction between the biology and the societal thing of it. I mean, I don't care if somebody wants to dress up as a woman. I don't care if somebody wants to, you know, I don't care what they want to do and how they want to live. But I kind of care what bathroom they want to go into. Because I'm in that bathroom, you know. (laughs) I mean, I don't want to, you know 
turn this into a different type of podcast, but imagine you're in the bathroom, right, doing your thing, you know, and, you know, a really attractive female walks in, you know, long legs, high heels, nice dress, long hair, female face, everything, you know, just hanging out in the bathroom, washing her hands, moving around, smiling, nodding at you. Maybe starts up a conversation with you and then, you know, steps up to the stall next to you and whips out, you know, whips out her dick, right? And it's bigger than yours, you know? So you're like, holy shit, right? You know, that, that'll, that'll fuck you up, you know? You'll, you'll walk away from that thinking, what the hell? So, you know, trigger warning, other people's values are involved here. Okay, carrying on. You know, there's a great story. Okay. Because I know that I'm no, often getting... Science. Really, what, what, science can, science. I want you to name a single scientist, just one, who says you can determine your own sex just by saying so. Can you name one scientist who says that? I, I, I'd be happy to send you many after... A, a when, scientist when you who said you can determine your own sex. An actual scientist, like someone is, who went to no, college. Listen, Are you serious? You, you, you clearly have some issues around this. It's not an which, issue which at all. I have questions I like. that you can't answer. And you're instead throwing things like, you're not enlightened. I'm asking you a sincere question. What's the science behind this? And you're deflecting. Why? I'm, 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 I'm simply not deflecting. This is, this is, this is, this is, a, matter of se- this is a matter of settled uh, uh, science. And it is something that... What's the that science, exactly? That you are what you say you are? Could I change my race, too? And, and don't this dodge is, that question. Is, that's a real question. Yeah, that's, that really is a great question, isn't it? <laughs> right? It's like, no, you can't change your race, but don't worry about it. I've got a pill, right, that I'm working on. You take this pill, you'll be able to change your race. Right, because there's, yeah, it's crazy. It's madness. No, no, you cannot. You cannot. Why? Change why can't I change my race, but I can change my sex? What's the difference? It is not about changing. It is not about changing. But why is it? about inherently who people are. Really? And, what if I say I'm inherently you... of another race? Who are you to say I'm not? Dude, what if I talk with an Australian accent? Can you say I'm not Australian? I mean, again, you're, you're getting into these silly hypotheses. It's not silly, silly at all. Two it years is, ago, nobody absolutely. thought you could change your own sex. And you're saying it's, that, well, it's one, settled one science. That, one that is simply not true. We have had transgender protections uh, in, in this country but for decades. But you haven't explained what transgender decades. is. You're just saying it's whatever it's, we it's, say it is. You, look, you want to go into this in this right-wing pseudoscience. It's not right-wing at all. It, it, it is. Ab- it absolutely It absolutely. It's pseudoscience, is. right? You name no, what you, I will you give you $1,000 if you... <laughs> okay, there you go, right? You know that things are getting serious when someone starts offering somebody money to just say something or get something done. Okay, carrying on. You can find any scientist, like an actual biologist, at an accredited American college willing to come on this show and say, here's the science, here's the state of play of biology 2017, I, I, name your sex I, and that's I, what I it is? You can't. I, I There's no science. I don't understand why you won't answer the, well, answer the question I'll answer about any why. question always. Excellent. Why shouldn't schools who are asking for it get guidance on how to create safe, env- safe environments for say, all their kids? I would say why that, that guidance exists. It floats on the internet. And if it's merely guidance, then the federal government needs no more to do with it. They well, can say, well, here's well, our guidance. Well, if, if You're it, undermining if, if your own simply, argument, if, if which was weak simply, to begin with. If, if, it is, <laughs> if, it is, if it is as simple as that, okay. then, why do you, then why do you care so much? Okay. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I'm actually enjoying this. <laughs> but I want you to produce the scientists just one. And let's, let's make it Harvard. And I'll give you a thousand bucks. And I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just asking the question. Anyway, we're out of time. Zach, it was great to see you. Okay, so there you go. All right. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. You know, you'd think that I watch these things through uh, up front, but I want to maintain, you know, the the spontaneity of the whole podcast situation. (laughs) So there it is. That's insane, isn't it? That you could just determine your gender by saying so. Mm. And even the desire to do this is an indication of a, of a kind of malfunction as a type of magical thinking. Now, I have compassion for the societal aspects of this. I understand people are on hormonal therapy, you know. Uh, yeah, just transgender bathroom, type it in and you'll find, you'll, you know, you're going to find a lot of transsexuals coming up as men, right, that are going out as women, and they're upset about this. I found one of those videos, you know. I was like, damn. And, you know, the, the, the man-woman thing, well, the man-woman person, um, you know, they had like close to half a million subscribers, you know. So it's really popular to work on this 
other side of it, of undermining all these traditional values. And it's really popular, right? Look at something like Facebook or Twitter. You know what I mean? That's their market. So the very values that will destroy you, that, those are the mainstream media values. That's what they want. So it's a very difficult situation that men are facing, you know, and it's it's easier for an older guy who's been, you know, run through the system, who's been screwed over a few times, um, who's adjusted his expectations in life to kind of see this thing. Right. But a young guy who just wants to get laid. Right. Who just wants to make a name for himself, who just wants to find some, you know, make a living so he can buy some food. You know, it's like, oh, OK, I suppose you can go into any bathroom you want. Right. So even whatever thoughts he has about this issue, um, you know, he's going to go along because he needs to get along. And. It's as if it undercuts his very ability to deal with reality and to respect himself. And that's the warning that I'm putting out, you know, in my MGTOW videos and podcasts. So I'm trying to keep these a little shorter because I got a lot of a lot of feedback from people. And I don't think that they realize that it's a podcast, man. It's not one of my videos. It's not just like this concentrated, you know, MGTOW message. It's, a, it's live. It's rambling. So with that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting on some new equipment. I'm ending this podcast real soon here, people. Um, waiting on some equipment, some mixing equipment, things like that. You know, uh, got a lot of new things planned at the Howard Dare Studio. I appreciate all your guys' support and all your ideas and interacting with you. I've not been hanging out in the um, comment section too much, but I'm there, right? I'm hanging out in the background. Right? I'm fucking Batman, I swear. What I do is um, when somebody screws up and starts acting like a blue pill mangina bitch, I come in and I am brutal, man. I just come out of nowhere, out of the shadows, and I just rip into them. And um, it's so bad. It, and, and, you know, and I want to do it like as an example, right? It's like, how dare you come into my channel and try to, you know, use this platform for your you know, poisonous enslavement ideas, right? This is where I'm coming from, right? And, and so I just rip into them um, in the comment section and then it's so brutal. It's so bad You know, I want to show it to you guys. So it's like, you know, this is what I do to them But it's like no 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 <laughs> No, it's too bad. That'll just scare the shit out of everybody. So I have to delete the comments, right? And um, I then have to delete the, um, the The user from the channel from his ability to comment right because he's insane And he's just been driven insane by my Batman presence. I'm Batman in the comment section Right, so I'm there, but you don't know I'm there. So I got to apologize for that. I would like to have some normal, healthy interaction there, but I swear being, you know, MGTOW and kind of like, you know, having certain views and stuff like that, it's, uh, it's dangerous. You know what I mean? It's emotionally, psychologically dangerous. Um, and you can bet your ass that by playing these news videos and stuff like that, that I'm definitely calling in a whole other group of people that are gonna like come to these videos from the complete other point of view. I swear I could play the same video and just come at it and say, you know, oh man, ugh, this guy's really bad, you know? And I would get 10 times more views because that's the aspect of society and culture that they want to play to. So if I come forward and I say, yeah, Trump is attacking, you know, all the transgender, the lesbian, LGBTQ, RSTU, whatever. If I come out and I say that, boom, 10 times more views, right? So it's hard being MGTOW. And I will support you guys in your MGTOW endeavors, right? But it won't be easy. No, man, it's, it's you know, shit. Look at these podcasts. Go back to, you know, had to delete them. <laughs> um, yeah, I identify as an attack helicopter. <laughs> That's a great line. Yeah. Yeah, it's great when I see women, you know, trying to carry forward a men's cause, you know, it's, but who knows why they're, you know, what their real motives are. Anyway, we've been going on a long time. I vowed to keep these things a little shorter for the people who don't realize that I'm, that it's a podcast that's happening in real time, you know, and I'm waiting for people to come around and stuff. Um, 
like I said, the notification system is all messed up. So I'm starting out the podcast and it's only, you know, it's like nobody knows about it. Only like one, two people are hanging around. I want, you know, I don't know, 50 or something like that. Um, so I'm going to have to figure that one out and work that out. So I've got a lot of things planned, a lot of new stuff, putting up videos, trying to, you know, do um, all different things that I think, you know, people would be interested in. Let me know what you think you know, I should be, you know, working on. Not really. I mean, let me know. But, you know, I've got some things that, you know, I already have planned. <laughs> so we'll be seeing what they are. And uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Don't forget to click on the like button for me, okay? Because I need those likes. All these things, in a large way, you know, my conversation is with the YouTube algorithm, right? I'm praying to this, like, electronic god. And I've got to appease this electronic god. And if I do... YouTube promotes my videos properly and my message goes out. So, you know, give me those thumbs ups, thumbs ups, and those likes and stuff like that, and the shares, because those are useful as well. All right, you know, some people call it e-begging, but I just call it, you know, trying to like survive in a competitive environment. All right, I'm going to leave it at there. That's what you have to do, MGTOW, survive in a competitive environment. So let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you guys. Thanks, MGTOW.